Hi, my name is JT and I'm here to make you better at chess. So today we're going to look at a trap in the Cairo Khan as white. Well, not really a trap. It's more like um, an opening nuance that I really like. And it's in the tall variation. So I'm going to show you how you can get really, really active play and kind of destroy opponents if they don't really know the idea or the line. So let's get right into it. Um, if you want to come see the lesson live, it's at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at switch.tv slash Japanese Tutor. Link is going to be down below. And also, we have a tournament every single night and a lesson every single night. So come through. Let's learn together and get good at chess together. So uh, let's go ahead with the uh, with the analysis. So e4, c6, d4, d5, e5. Um, and here, most players are going to play here. We're not going to talk about the C5 line, although um, if you came to the stream, we have we did like a two-hour thing on why this is not the best idea and how to counter it. Um, anyways, we're going to play H4 here. A lot of the time in Blitz, and I'm, this is just a Blitz line, people will just play here. And you will win immediately after g4 because this bishop has nowhere to run to. It doesn't really matter where they go. And they're trapped. Right? So that's the first step of the trap. It, <laughs> I think I even caught like an IM pre-moving. So <laughs> it's, a, it's actually quite a funny trap. So that's but that's not the main reason why we're playing this, but it's an added benefit. Um, so a lot of the time, you're going to see h6 or h5 in this case. h5, we are not going to discuss. That's a different line altogether, and that's probably the best line for black. We're going to talk about h6 because a lot of people who just start studying the Karakon, they will always see h6, h6, h6 all the time. Um, and so they will always play h6, and then the idea is to play g4. Now, some people who are stronger, they might say, well, I'm going to try to ruin his pawn structure. My bishop is going to go back anyways. So why not ruin the pawn structure on the way? H5, and then go back. And so here is basically one of the key positions. And we'll go back and we'll see what happens if they just go back immediately. Um, but this is actually a better version of what we want. Um, and so here we're going to sacrifice a pawn. Right, and it looks kind of wonky, but after we sacrifice the pawn, then we are going to trade bishops. Why? We can see that the light squares are extremely weak around black's king, and the point is that we're controlling this square, and we're also controlling this square. So the e5 square and the g6 square are really, really, really vital to this opening because that means this bishop cannot get out. You have to move two pawns here, and you have to move that pawn. So the main what happens here, 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 knight here. I like to throw the, in this little kind of move. We don't have to check right away, although we can. Uh, we, I, I like playing this little move because this allows um, knight here, which is a blunder, because after we play check, we pick the knight up. Right, so it, uh, and it doesn't really hurt us to play it. So after queen d6, we can play you know, knight to f3. And all this, I think, even here, white is, I think, much better um, after knight to f3. Um, knight to f3 is good. Um, I actually had this in one of my games. Um, so knight to f3 here, and then check. King d8, and just, we are just destroying after knight e5. Um, so you can see that Black's bishop will never see the light of day. That means if we're making this bishop bad, we're also making this rook bad in turn. And they are basically effectively down two pieces for you just giving up one pawn. Right? And you can get a lot of different play and very rapid play. And what's funny about this position that even if they try to take, take, let's say they play like queen b4, c3, queen b6. You don't even have to take. I mean, you could, and it's it's the best move, but the idea is like, hey, I just don't want his pieces to play at all. Knight d2 could be an idea, right? <laughs> Which is extremely funny because if you think about it, even if they try to escape, right, or they try to move away, or they try to do something, they can never 
make this a break. They can never, because it's their own pawns that are limiting their pieces, right? So in this kind of pawn structure, it's quite a hilarious idea and it, it, uh, it happens quite often. So let's go back. So what happens if after we play g4, well, we play here, well, then we still play the same thing. We play e6 and after takes bishop here, you know, there are a lot of moves, but if they tried to play g6, not trying to trade that bishop off, then they kind of lose time in the opening. And I think we can just proceed with either f3, g5, or, you know, queen e2 is, are all awesome moves attacking their weaknesses. Okay. Let's say they do trade off because usually in the Capricorn you will trade off. Then this just leads again back to Disaster Town. If they try to play here, um, then we can just go on and uh, play Queen G6 or Knight F3. And we can see that we're trying to occupy this square with a Knight and not let these two pieces see the light of day. Um, so I hope that this was educational. I hope you liked it. And I hope that was enough fire on the board to keep to get you interested in uh, playing this opening. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you like the content, consider liking. And if you really like the content, consider subscribing. I'll see you then. Uh, well, when will I see you? Well, I'll see you next time. Take care.